Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of my fall series. This week we are talking about falling in love with inclusion in finances. You guys didn't think I could do this series without talking about something semi-controversial, did you? (laughs) I also have a podcast episode that I'm going to link to about the whole Black Lives Matter movement, and I have some other great interviews that I've done that I am going to link to as well. Basically, just check the description. There is going to be a whole bunch of amazing resources down there for you guys to check out. Before we jump into that, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment below about what you thought about this video. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about my background with my history degree. And yes, I do have a bachelor's in history and I specialized in post World War II America. And so I have read a lot of books and learned a lot of things about the civil rights movement and everything that has happened post 45 in America. And personally, I think that this topic is so important because I honestly believe that we are living in a time period that is going to be put into the history books. And so you guys have probably seen these memes and posts going around about if you ever wondered what you would do in the civil rights movement or in Nazi Germany or all of these, you know, huge events in history and which side you would have chosen right now in history, you are choosing a side. Well, what we are going through right now in this country will be in history books. And to me, I want to make sure that I am on the side of history that I said I would have been on hypothetically when I was reading about Hitler and Martin Luther King and all of these huge pillars and events that have happened throughout history, right? And to me, it helps me to put it in perspective to know that this is just not right now. The conversation that we are having right now is the result of everything that has come from the time when slavery was legal until after slavery was abolished and then to the civil rights movement and to current events and everything that has happened in between. What we are living through right now is a solid part of history and it will be a defining moment in the history books. And for me personally, I want to make sure that I am on the side of history that I will be proud of. So fast forward all the way to 2020, where we are seeing the Black Lives Matter movement grow after George Floyd's murder and Breonna Taylor and Now, recently, Jacob Blake and all of these tragic events that have happened and all of the outcome following them, people will say, keep politics out of personal finance. People will tell you, stick to what you know, talk about what what you're supposed to talk about, stay in your lane. The thing is, is that they will tell you this, they will tell you this, not just in the personal finance community, they will tell you this in every single aspect. Athletes, they need to just stick to play in their sport and be quiet. Musicians, they need to just stick to singing the songs and be quiet. They don't need to talk about politics. The truth of the matter is, is that I am an American citizen and I am a voter. Therefore, my opinion is allowed. If everyone does that in every single job, oh, you're an electrician, you need to be quiet and just stick to being an electrician. Oh, you're a nurse, you need to just stick to being a nurse and be quiet. Don't ever talk about politics then who would talk about politics? Just politicians. That would be it. And the problem, I think, is politicians talk too much and regular people don't talk about it enough and don't talk about it in a healthy atmosphere. If they do talk about it, it gets heated, it gets argumentative, it gets defensive, and there's no healthy conversation, there's no growth happening. The fact of the matter is is that you cannot detach politics from money. Just like you cannot detach mental health from money. What is the point of talking about one without talking about the other? It affects every single aspect. Money is the foundation of our entire society. Therefore, it's the foundation of our entire lives. And to exclude money from politics, just like if we excluded money from mental health, there would be basically nothing left to talk about. I'm here to talk to you about money, but I'm sorry, it ties in. 
Politics affects our taxes. It affects our healthcare options. It affects unemployment rates. Not only that, it affects unemployment benefits, right? And during COVID, we, a lot of us have figured out the hard way what that really looks like. It affects the pandemic protocols. It affects what businesses have been shut down. And that directly affects money. How many people have been laid off? How many restaurants have been closed? How many factories have been cut back? And all of all of these different jobs that have been affected. Guess what? That's not a very distant connection between politics and your money. It also affects our public school systems and our quality of education. A lot of people would like to complain on social media about how we weren't taught how to do a budget in school. We weren't taught about taxes in school. Guess what? That directly relates to politics. That directly to relates to who our president is, who your governors are, who your superintendent is, who serves on your school board. That's all politics. Those people have a direct correlation to what is taught in school and what is not taught in school. And that directly relates to personal finance. And secondly, relates to what type of job you have, which directly relates to how much money you make. Politics also directly relates to food stamps, social security, and all of these other type of stimulus checks, things like this, right? If we expect our government to bail us out in times of global pandemics and send us stimulus checks or send us food stamps when we're struggling or send us social security when we are over a certain age, guess what, guys? There's politics and money directly related to each other. Okay, I'm done with that rant. Through all the history that I have read, all the documentaries that I have watched and everything that I have learned, the most important thing I think is that representation matters. Can you see yourself in this leadership role? Can you see yourself in this career? Can you see yourself aspiring to this level of wealth and success? And without representation, those ideals are even harder to imagine. You probably have seen my Dave Ramsey video that was my most controversial video that I've probably ever done. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to link to it in the description. So after I posted that Dave Ramsey video, I got a lot of interesting comments. Some of the comments were just like, it sounds to me like you just want Dave Ramsey to agree with you. He's entitled to his own opinion. Of course he is. But the reason why this matters is that he is a major leader in the personal finance community. Millions of people look up to him. So what he says is going to drip down affect millions of people. No, he doesn't have to agree with me. I don't have to agree with him either, right? But what scares me is the people that blindly will follow all of these leaders, not just Dave Ramsey, everyone influential. We live in a world of influencers. We live in a generation of social media influencers actually affecting people and changing people's lives. So someone else commented on that YouTube video that Dave Ramsey uses two of the most powerful world-shaping tools, wealth and religion. And when he brings those two things together, that is basically your whole entire life, your money and your religion. And that makes him a serious leader in the community, right? Therefore, what he says matters. There were so many other influencers that got called out or their true colors shown through all of this. And PT from FinCon was another one. Everything started to come out about his tweets and how he actually wasn't paying people of color and women equal to what he was paying some men or some white influencers. It just kind of was this awakening of maybe we have to not only question what these influencers are teaching us to do with our money, but also how, what is their view on diversity and Black Lives Matter and equal pay and women's rights and all of these issues actually directly relate to our money. So why does inclusion in finances matter so much? 
because according to a 2018 Census Bureau survey, which I will link to in the description as well, Black and African American families earned a median income of about $41,000 a year, while Hispanic and Latino families earned about $51,000 a year, while white families were earning about $65,000 a year. So to me, I think the lower your income is, the more you need a budget. The lower your demographics average income is, the more you need the help. The more you need to see representation in your leadership, the more you need your point of view heard. So this is why I myself have decided that even though these conversations are heavy and are sometimes uncomfortable to have, that we must continue to have them. I must continue to use my voice to speak out, to raise awareness, to help in any way that I can. And so I am doing this with bringing up these conversations more, with making sure that I have a lot of diversity in my guests that I have on my podcast, with having these conversations with my children and how I show up daily on social media and so on and so on. I am going to link to an entire list of people of color that I think are great for you guys to follow on Instagram, help you get some more diversity in your news feed. I would love some feedback in the comments if there are any accounts that I missed or maybe I don't yet follow. And I also would love to give a shout out to the Black Personal Finance community and the curator of that account, Jasmine Tillery, who I had on my podcast recently that I'm gonna link to as well. Her conversation was so good, so smart, and she just leads with her heart and everything that she does. So. She has started the Instagram page, Black Personal Finance Community, and the hashtag that goes along with it. I highly suggest following that account. And if you are a person of color, knowing that there is representation there. There are people out there doing what you are aspiring to do. And then if they can do it, you can definitely do it. So I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like this video, leave me a comment about what you thought and if you have any suggestions of people I should follow. Don't forget to also subscribe to my channel and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye guys.